Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're starting our ACC Coastal Division predictions today, and our next team is coming off a 9-4 season, including a bowl win over a very good West Virginia team, but they lost their star quarterback. However, they have very high expectations, led by an experienced head coach. They are... The Miami Hurricanes. So a lot of people at Miami picked first in the Coastal Division. Uh, you know, like I said, they have 15 returning starters this year, 7 on offense, 8 on defense. They lost Brad Kaya, their very star quarterback, the one that uh, a lot of people had pegged as the number one overall pick a couple of years ago, uh, but he did not actually meet those expectations. He had a good year last year, but wasn't what everybody thought he was going to be, and he left early. If he had stayed one more year, I would really have Miami picked very high. I think a lot of people would too, maybe potential playoff um, sleepers uh, had Kaya stayed this season, but he did not. Uh, Miami saw themselves rise as high as number 10 last season when they played Florida State, and they lost that Florida State game by one point thanks to a blocked extra point at the very end of the game. After that, their kind of season got derailed. They lost to Florida State, Virginia Tech, North Carolina, and Notre Dame. Four straight losses, uh, putting them at 4-4 four and four at the eight-game mark. Then they ended up winning their last five games to finish the season 9-4. and four. So if they had won that Florida State game, I think the season would have ended a little differently for them. They could have potentially uh, made it to the ACC championship game instead of uh, Virginia Tech, but that's not what happened. They still had a very successful season. This year, I think expectations are a little bit higher. Uh, so we're just going to dive into it. Open up the season uh, with a very cupcake team. I mean, give them a win there. The key in this game right here, though, will be how fast they can develop that quarterback. Uh, will the quarterback be able to replace Kaya's shoes? Will he be as, uh, as good as people hope he can be? Uh, I think that Mark Richt is a great coach. I think he'll be able to figure this stuff out. He had great quarterbacks at Georgia, so I think he'll be able to develop this quarterback uh, into what they need him to be, and they'll have a little bit of time to do that before they get their first big test at Florida State. So um, so Miami potentially could have a very good offense with those seven returning starters, but that quarterback will play a huge factor in how well the offense does, uh, how well the offense is. At Arkansas State, second week of the season, very uh, interesting game, sending a very big ACC power to a Sun Belt school. Uh, not uncommon, though. If you remember last year, Miami did travel to Appalachian State. Uh, so Appalachian State and Arkansas State are by far the best two teams in the Sun Belt right now. Uh, so this game is no pushover from Miami. Uh, Arkansas State could give them a little bit of a challenge for like a quarter. You saw that in Appalachian State last year. Uh, but Miami ultimately will get this win on the road. I don't see any way that Arkansas State will be able to pull off this upset. Uh, they did give Missouri a challenge a couple years ago, if you remember that, when Missouri traveled to ASU. I do not think that uh, this will happen. that will happen to Miami this year. I think they'll go in and get the, get the job done. Then, back-to-back -back road games. Uh, at Florida State, early ACC conference game, only the third week of the season. That's going to be a tough game for the Hurricanes. They're still trying to figure out who they are. They still, uh, they're still contenders in this division. But I'm going to give them the loss at Florida State. Um, I don't think the game's going to be as close as it was last year, that 20-19 to loss. I think Florida State will end up running away with this one. Not horribly. It's not going to be a major blowout. But I'm thinking at least 10 points or more for Florida State in this game. Uh, I just don't see Miami going on the road and doing that, even though they're not too far apart. Um, geographically, I do think Miami will lose this game. And then Toledo, another non-pushover game. One of the best teams in the MAC. Uh, have a very good quarterback, Logan Woodside. So, um... Miami doesn't need to overlook this ASU and Toledo game, um, but I think Toledo have to come to Miami. Uh, they're going to be angry after that loss to Florida State. You know, it's how big of a rivalry game that is, and that's going to be a win for Miami there. Then at Duke, uh, the last time Miami went to Duke, you remember the very controversial lateral on the uh, last play of the game on the kickoff return? Uh, tons of penalties in that game that were not called, and Miami ended up escaping. Uh, shockingly, no one saw that coming against Duke. Um, and in the end, it was very controversial. Probably should never have happened, never should have counted, but they did beat Duke. This year, I think they'll get Duke again. They'll beat them uh, on the road. Duke uh, might have a chance to make it to another bowl this season, but they're not as good as they used to be, where they used to be nationally ranked with that very potent offense. Uh, but this season, I do expect them to be a little bit better. So a much-needed bye week. 4-1 going into the bye week in October. Not bad. Lone loss to Florida State. But also keep in mind, their biggest challenge since that Florida State game was probably Duke or Toledo. Uh, then they get Georgia Tech down here, second week coming off the bye week. I like that. It's at home. They're going to be rested. I'm going to give Miami the win there. And then up here against Syracuse, 
Uh, as I said against Syracuse, they're a very good team. I think their offense is dangerous, but the eight returning starters on defense will carry the Hurricanes in this one, and they'll beat Syracuse at home. The fact that they get back-to-back -back home games is going to be huge for the Hurricanes uh, late in the stretch and, um, and in a very difficult ACC Coastal Division as well. Although, I will say one thing. I don't see the Coastal Division being as competitive this year as it was last year. You know, last year, uh, even the year before that, you had teams, Miami was competitive, Virginia Tech, uh, Pittsburgh a little bit, North Carolina a little bit. If you go back a little farther, Duke was competitive. They even won the Coastal Division a couple years ago. I don't see that being the case this season. Then they travel to North Carolina. Um, that's going to be a fun one to watch, as always. North Carolina did beat Miami last year in Miami, but um, they have Brandon Harris, the LSU transfer as quarterback. I don't think UNC will be able to pull off the upset over the Hurricanes. Uh, so that's going to be another win for Miami. And then Virginia Tech, really, if uh, depending on how Virginia Tech's doing, this could easily determine who wins this coastal uh, division. Miami will already have a loss going into this game. So depending on how Virginia Tech's doing, uh, this game could potentially determine who wins. It did last year. Virginia Tech ended up winning the uh, coastal division. So for this season, it's at Miami. I like that. They're going to get the win. And last season, if you remember, uh, they did go to Notre Dame and lost. Kind of a shocker. I figured Miami would have won that game seeing how bad Notre Dame was. But this season, I think Notre Dame has to come down to Miami. Miami, at this point, is looking like potential playoff contenders, if not ACC title contenders, with that only loss to Florida State early in the season. They'll get a win against Notre Dame. And then Virginia team that's been struggling lately uh, could improve this season, but not enough to beat Miami. Uh, they might, they'll get another win there. So if you look at that, was that five home games out of, the, out of the last six? The only road game and after the bye week is against North Carolina. So Miami, the schedule is very favorable for them this season. The non-conference slate isn't horrible. I mean, decent power uh, group of five games against Arkansas State Toledo, but not horrible. And then they close out the season against Pittsburgh, uh, a team I do not have very high expectations for this season. I think Pittsburgh will make take a major step back. Miami will get the win on the road against Pittsburgh in the finale. Finish the season 11 and one with those 15 returning starters. They're best under Mark Richt, and Miami can potentially be college football playoff contenders if they win the ACC championship, which I think they will make with that 11 and one record. So we'll just have to wait and find out. But I do have very high expectations for Miami this season. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if there are any teams you want to see predicted later on. And we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.